Bill Tripp. I'm the designer of the Y7 and the Y9. Uh, I've been working with Michael Schmidt since 2017. Really great to be here in Cannes with two boats next to each other with a boat like this having been realized. It's been a lot of work and a great journey and we're really happy with the results so far. More ahead. When Michael and I first started talking, we were both found we were really interested in making boats simpler to sail and more enjoyable. So we're really trying to make it experience driven. We really are of the feeling that sailboats get needlessly complicated and expensive at times. And we wanted to roll that back while still doing boats that when you looked at in the harbor and say, that's the boat I want to sail. That's the boat I want. That's a gee, if I could only experience that boat. So that's kind of a balancing act. And we don't find it one of compromise. We find it one of balance where we're trying to say, okay, let's give the luxury of space and the feeling of being involved in sailing, but not making it something where you're constantly tuning the instrument. We want people to be able to step on board and be able to play right away and be able to get a lot out of the boat from their first touch. We want to take the technology and make it relatively invisible so that they're experiencing the boat, the sailing, the ocean. They're not dealing with the generator, the air conditioning, the push buttons, the electricity, the hydraulics. We really want it to be feeling like you're sailing the boat when you're pushing the wheel or trimming the sails, you're getting a, a feedback loop right away that you want to be participant with more and more. So I, I think a lot about sailing is a feedback loop. That's why people do it. And it's the difference between a motor yacht and a sailboat is that you actually experience it. You know, the, that old adage about a powerboat, you say, are we there yet? And a sailboat, you say, well, we're here. For us, the audience is coming from people who really know sailing and look at the boat, can identify what it is and say, gee, that looks like the kind of boat that's really interesting. And the same way a lot of dinghies are getting simpler to sail and are more, a little bit more everyman. We also wanted to be attracting power boaters over who are thinking, why am I burning so much fuel? Why is it so loud? Why am I bored? And we said, maybe they could look at a boat like this and say, gee, I can take my family, I can get this experience. I can see myself spending weeks or months on this boat or weekends and really enjoy that. And yet I'm sailing. And I don't have to be at a super expert level to do it. Um, that's what we're trying to, trying to bring to the market. It's funny because it, the design of the boat is not just about the interior. Like we look at sailboat design as transportation design, and we want people to have a sailing experience on the boat. We don't want it to be just a hotel experience. That said, when people come down below here, almost always when they hit the bottom and look around, they say, wow. And that's a word we like to hear. It is a performance boat. The boats hit 26 knots. We didn't set out to do only a performance boat by any stretch of the imaginations, but when you've got a boat that'll go 26 knots, I think much faster than that, you start to think about helmets and body armor, you know? So we're, we're pretty happy about that. It's, the boat's still easy to sail. We've brought a lot of the Y7 stuff over. Everything we thought we could bring that was appropriate. This boat does have a backstay and doesn't have a square top as compared to the Y7. If we do a square top here, we will have runners, and that's a complication, so right now we, we haven't done that. But we've brought most of that technology over to try to keep a 90-footer as accessible as possible. But this does have professional crew on board. Um, I was just on board the Y7 with uh, an owner from Denmark, and he and his wife sailed the boat. They have no crew. And he's done everything so that, to be sure, that they can sail the boat by themselves, and they've even trained that if he goes overboard, she can come back and get him. And I said, is she a great sailor? And he says, no, but she understands the boat. We can't do that on this boat. This boat, this boat needs a professional crew. We think it's probably three crew. I think that you can get by with two, but usually there, you've got somebody who's an engineer mechanic looking at that side of the boat. Somebody's cooking and taking care of the, the guests to make sure the boat maintains a pristine level, and then a captain who's kind of in charge depending on his relationship with the owner. 
you know, some owners are actually the de facto captains, um, and some are, you know, some are taken around by their captains, and that's really that's not our decision. That's open. The Y7 was originally conceived with a boat that was big enough that we could have a crew cabin on the boat that didn't take away a lot of the 70 foot interior, but could also be handled by two people quite, quite readily. And the 90 is the next step up. And this is, I think, a little more of a round the world boat. We know that the whole number one is, that's definitely bound for, for places that you don't see on charts uh, normally. You know. Uh, probably getting the weights for us, getting the weights coordinated with the yard, it's pretty dry stuff, but trying to control the thousands of things that happen in this process, so they kept coming back to the middle, so the boat weighed right, the boat was, had the right weight and balanced right and floated right, so that we knew it would be a success. And there's a lot of things to control from manufacturing, from costs, from engineering. And we don't do that by ourselves. We do that as a fairly big team. And we've got a couple of partners at Y Yachts who are superb. Uh, Luca, uh, Luca Giametti and uh, Francesca are fantastic to work with. And they control their aspects well enough that we know when they give us information, we know it's correct. I would say the design side is much harder. It's, he really pushes. He pushes, 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 and we like that because we get a better result and push the boat further out, further up the curve, um, do more, um, do more with it. And his experience allows the, makes it easier to get the result. So I think the result is harder, is is further up in terms of achievement, but getting there is not as difficult as it might have been because, you know, the quality of the boat is there that. It, for this price, I've, you know, we always wonder, are we going to be able to do this, get this boat on, wait, look like this, it will sail well, and, and uh, he's been able to prove we can. But I think a lot of credit to Michael on that, because he's got a lot of experience on that. That and the hydro generation mean that the boat can make its own power and isn't reliant on diesel the way a boat normally is. Um, to power the boat we need diesel, but for generating the hotel loads we can use the batteries and the solar panels can keep up with the hotel load and the boat when it's sailing can generate enough load to run all the hydraulics and the main sheets and the sailing systems and the air conditioning and the refrigeration so you can just turn the engine off and you can sail quietly for, if you've got speed you don't, you don't need to use the main engine at all. And it also means when the boat's uh, at anchor, you can go swimming and not have the generator on, and the boat's still air conditioned, and so that's all a virtuous loop that the whole world is, you know, is seeking. Um, I had concerns about how much that propeller is going to slow the boat down, that it's constantly turning the the hydro generating uh, one, but obviously at high speed it works pretty well. So, um, you know, it's that's a balance between how much do we want to pay for greening something, and I think. We're willing to slow the boat down, you know, half a knot, three quarters of a knot to do that. Um, and the owners certainly are. And they've, they've put a lot of into this in terms of costs of batteries and, um, and solar panels and a lot of research and design. And it's nice to see somebody come out of a motor yacht only five years ago, come into a sailboat and then say, OK, let's, let's start pushing the company. And they pushed us to, to bring that to the market, which is nice. If the boat's sailing, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> if we get rainy days, probably not. Yeah. You know, we still have we we still have diesel on board to for propulsion. So when you can't sail, then you need diesel. Yeah. And usually the answer to that is, I mean, really, open the hatches and sail the boat, and your load goes way down. Yeah. So it's a lot of it is a use experience that you've got to decide what you're going to do. If you open doors and hatches and you have the wind going through, or if you lock the boat down tight. If you lock the boat down tight, you need more air conditioning. Fortunately, if you lock the boat down tight because you need more air conditioning, the solar panels are working, uh, working pretty well. And, you know, and they will, 
they will put power into the batteries at a, at a pretty fast rate. I think it's like three and a half, I think it's three and a half kilowatts. That's what I, what I counted we could do. And I think sailing we can get another five, something like that. And that, that's going a long way to answering the first questions. You know, the, we're not, electric boats are still a way off in terms of fully electric boats. So. With Michael, we're working with just the YS project. So there are, there's, there's three of the boats now. We've designed two of them. We're working on a fourth right now. So, and with Michael, we're always pushing on the creative envelope. You know, that's what makes him tick. It's what makes us tick. We're always, can we do this? Is it possible? Can we change this? Uh, the Y7, we've made a couple of uh, updates from what we've learned sailing the boats that trying to broaden the ability to use the boat easily. Um, so we've done a Mark II on it, and most people won't notice the differences. You have to be an expert on the boat to see that we've tweaked the, the, the winch location so that you can get to the power of the sails a little easier. Um, we've changed the sail plan slightly uh, back to the original sail plan that we first, in, first intended. Um, we did kind of a one-off med sail plan for the boat and we said, you know what, the original sail plan is really what we want to have for the group of people that we're attracting. And we've just launched that one and that boat, you can steer the boat with one finger on the wheel upwind at nine knots. You don't have to actually clasp the wheel, you can actually with one finger on it do it. And, you know, that's the joy of working with Michael, and we know what we're doing. Michael knows what he's doing. He puts together the right equipment, so the steering system really gives you that kind of feedback. And, you know, when I came out of college and I got on a 65-footer, in 20 knots, it was pretty hard to steer the boat. And now the boats are nicely balanced, and that invites people on board. We're talking about the future constantly. We're not going to sit still. We're, we just were sitting down going over you know, what's next, how do we get there? Um, you know, and even on the Y7, we, the Y7, you know, we're now selling boats for 2025. The boat was designed in 18. So, you know, in seven years, hopefully we've learned something that we can, we can push forward.